and you've all met characters like Shang-Chi. You've all met amazing new characters like the Eternals, like Yelena Belova, and the Red Guardian, and Agatha Harkness came into the MCU. You met Miss Minutes, who kicked off our entire program today. Kate Bishop, Maya Lopez, Kamala Khan, and even, even a brand new Captain America in Sam Wilson. Folks, three months ago, I made a video called Wakanda Forever, My Last Dance with the MCU. And because I was sloppy in my editing, I wasn't able to monetize it. So, because I don't believe in doing anything for free, I decided to edit and re-upload the video. But yeah, this decision has been a long time coming. Black Panther Wakanda Forever could very well be my last dance with the MCU. Because Phase 4 has been a disappointment. Aside from WandaVision and Loki, which were great, and being mildly entertained by Thor Love and Thunder, Phase 4 of the MCU has been a major disappointment. The only reason why I held off for so long is because of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I was a huge fan of the first movie and I'm interested to see how things will play out with the passing of Chadwick Boseman in the sequel. And I wanted to be caught up on everything leading up to it. But other than that, there's been no lingering interest from me in the MCU. And not just because it's woke or socially conscious. That has played some role in my decision, but it's largely due to the MCU superhero fatigue. I've watched everything they've put out in the past 14 years, even the stuff I didn't really care about. But it's all beginning to look the same to me and I'm getting tired of the shtick. I'm tired of the unimaginative fan service, the focus tested garbage designed to appeal to a mass audience of casual viewers at the expense of true fans. In short, I like entertainment that has depth and complexity and the MCU has neither. And I think that's because we live in an ADD culture where everything is on demand and delivered in a day and reduced to a meme. And it's hard to keep people's attention because they don't like waiting. They want whatever they want when they want it. The average person doesn't like foreshadowing, slow buildups and intricate plots that are left up to personal interpretation or the mental challenges that come with watching a well-crafted script. That's why I believe MCU movies are so successful. They're simplified to appeal to an audience that doesn't really want to pay attention to them. Their movies move at an up-tempo pace with immediate payoffs. There is no character development, intelligent screenwriting, deep plots, or twists. The bad guy shows up, he explains his evil plans, the good guy comes to stop him, action sequences ensue, bing bang boom, the good guys win, and the end credits roll. And everyone walks away happy because it was loud, colorful with cool fight scenes, explosions, and family appropriate jokes. It's the happy meal of movie making. And that's no dig at the people who enjoy them, I get it. People live hard lives and they just want to relax and be entertained by something simple. Most people don't like watching heavy dramas because it can add to the day-to-day -day stress they face in the real world. Or they have children that they want to shield from adult situations and the MCU is, well, not so much now, but historically has been a family-friendly entertainment alternative that's better than those silly animated kitty movies. And that's cool. But that's what it is. It's a family-friendly action alternative. It's not for people like me, people who expect more from their movies. So I understand why they do it. But after watching everything they've done over a span of 14 years, it's gotten stale and repetitive. For example, the sidekicks and the corny jokes. Every MCU movie is essentially a buddy comedy. There's the straight man and his goofy counterpart. Most times, it's the main character that's the straight man, other times it's his sidekick. In Black Widow, it was the Red Guardian. In Shang-Chi, it was Katie. In Eternals, it was Kuran. In Spider-Man No Way Home, it's Ned. But in Thor Love and Thunder, it's Thor. I can go on and on, but you get my point. Every single movie has one. It's an overused ploy, which is fine in moderation, but the MCU overdoes it. They put those clowns in every damn movie. They're not rewatchable. Rewatchability is my next issue with the MCU. It's hard to watch one of their movies more than once. They're fun to see in the theater, but boring on the second viewing. Take Spider-Man No Way Home, for example. Long before that movie was released, there were rumors about the multiverse. 
Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire reprising their roles. There was also speculation that Tom Hardy was joining the cast as Venom and Michael Keaton was reprising his role as the Vulture. All of that excited me. Walking into that theater gave me feelings reminiscent of my childhood when I used to run down the stairs on Christmas mornings hoping Santa had given me everything I'd asked for. And for the most part, the movie did just that. All of the speculation and rumors paid off. Tom Hardy really didn't have a role in the film and Michael Keaton really wasn't in it, but everything else was true. And it was amazing to see it all play out. And speaking of the theater, watching it in a room full of Spider-Man fans who had been following the character throughout the years was an amazing experience. Not only did you have fans of the current MCU franchise, but you also had fans of the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Spider-Verses, all coming together and converging in one place. It was almost like being in the stands of a major league sporting event. People cheered when Daredevil made his cameo, and they went absolutely nuts when Andrew and Toby walked through those portals. It created such a positive atmosphere in the theater that it caused me to overlook the flaws, the annoying MCU-isms they put in every film. But when I watched the movie for a second time, at home, away from the crowd, the novelty wore off, and all that was left was a mediocre film. The flaws that I was able to ignore on the first viewing became intolerable on the second. Watching it for a second time with a sober mind, absent from the magic surrounding it in the theater and fans drastically changed my opinion. I no longer see Spider-Man No Way Home as the awesome movie I initially thought it was. To be honest, it kinda sucks. And that's been my experience with most MCU films as a whole. I don't like watching them a second time. The next issue I have with the MCU is, I don't care for the direction they're going in. Back in 2017, like everyone else, I was excited at the news of Disney acquiring 20th Century Fox because it meant that they were going to reacquire Marvel's movie rights to the Fantastic Four and the Mutants. So over the coming years, I was expecting to see Professor X, Wolverine, Deadpool, Mr. Fantastic, Doctor Doom, and the rest being slowly grafted into the MCU continuum. But five years later, and all we've gotten is Kamala Khan, America Chavez, Shang-Chi, She-Hulk, and the Eternals. No Fantastic Four, no mutants, just backbencher niche characters no one gives a damn about. And as I look at what's coming over the next two years, it's more of the same. Echo, Ironheart, a black Captain America, and a Marvel's movie. More bench player characters. The best they've done over the past five years with the 20th Century Fox properties is offer up Professor X and Mr. Fantastic as alternate universe cameos in the latest Doctor Strange movie. But that's all we've gotten from the acquisition of the formerly held 20th Century Fox properties. So there's no signs of them moving in another direction. They are determined to drive the franchise into the ground by ignoring what the people want in favor of the garbage they don't. So I'm bailing or I'm considering bailing, but I've lost interest in paying money to see movies and shows based on characters I don't care about. At the end of the day, the MCU needs to grow up and focus on what the audience wants. To me, that means they need to stop making these lame, overly predictable, kiddie projects with obscure characters no one cares about. The kids that watched and remembered the first Iron Man movie back in 2008 are adults now. Many of them are grown and have kids of their own now. And I'm sure this cheesy form of filmmaking the MCU has perfected has worn thin with them as well. I'm not saying there must be gore, sex, gritty violence, and adult language in their films, but how about some sophisticated content? How about making a movie that's fun to watch outside of the theater, free from the novelty? DC has done that beautifully with films like The Batman, the Christopher Nolan Dark Knight trilogy, Justice League Snyder Cut. Not only are these movies exceptionally well done, but you can watch them again and enjoy them just as you did the first time you saw them. And those movies aren't overly mature. They aren't childish. I wouldn't show them to a five-year-old, but I wouldn't show Eternals to a young child either. My point is, for me to continue being an active consumer of their brand, they need to pick it up. Now I know this could potentially be an issue for my channel, which is why I haven't made a definitive decision as movie reviews and commentary are a large part of what I do, but for the past two years I've gone into every MCU project from phase four with an air of cynicism. I expect the projects to suck, and it's probably made me overly critical of their brand, and I don't think doing negative reviews over and over again is necessarily productive. 
but we'll see. I've already made plans to see Wakanda forever. And again, I don't anticipate that movie being any good. However, I'm not blind to the fact that you guys enjoy, or at least some of you do, my commentary on movies, specifically those dealing with the MCU. And if that's what you want, then I'll man up, eat my vegetables, and continue watching the MCU projects. So if you like this video, please give it a like and leave a comment in the comments section and share the link on your social media platforms. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way you'll get alerts every time I upload a new content. This is The Layman's Journal. Thanks for stopping by. I'm out. Congratulations on making it to the end of my video. Please feel free to check out my channel. I may have some other content there you may enjoy. Here's one of my favorites. This past Thursday, the good people over at Marvel Studios had a red carpet event for the premiere of Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever. And from what I can tell, it was an exciting star-studded event. All of the celebrities and actors and cast members of the show were there, including those that were not even in the movie. Fans were invited, they showed up in their cosplay, it streamed live on YouTube, and aside from the celebrities and fans, the media was invited, as well as social media influencers and movie critics. And while there is a moratorium in place on the reviews, a lot of content creators posted their reactions to seeing the movie. So they didn't give a review, they just gave you their immediate feelings after watching it. And from what I can tell, there were some naysayers, maybe one or two, but the overwhelming reaction was positive, giving you the impression that this is a good movie. But I'm cynical. I don't believe any positive word that I heard about the movie. Because Hollywood is a business like any other and their purpose is to get you to go out to spend your money on their movie or to watch whatever streaming service they're advertising. And they do that by paying for positive press and reactions. They select certain members of the press, as well as those in the movie review community, that they believe will be favorable to them. People that they believe will rubber stamp anything they put out in exchange for early and insider access to their films. These people may present themselves and they pose as critics when in reality they're fans, they're clout chasers. These are the types that love.